This is Dube No More, a main account that hasn't completed much in the world of Gilinor. He's still fresh off the Toro Island and has loads of adventures ahead of him. He has goals and achievements that he needs to complete to become a high level player. And on his journey, he's going to be your guide, a guide to becoming a better player without all the sweaty tick lord methods. So if you're ever lost in your journey with no idea where to go, you can look to this journey as a roadmap to accomplish your goals. With no restrictions and no worries in the world other than just plain RuneScape, how far can our adventure take us? In each episode, we accomplish a lot, and if you can't remember everything we did, well, go back and watch the previous episode. But hey, I get it, you might not have all the time in the world, so I'm going to give you a quick recap. First, we headed to the desert to stop a powerful demon, and of course he was no match for our rude scimitar. We slayed the demon and used his blood to power up our silverlight. With our silverlight beefed up, we decided to complete some adventures in Mortania. We helped the wife get her dead husband's bank pin and in return, we received a zombie chicken. This chicken would later be used to create the best in slot ranged equip, the Ava's Attractor. From there we adventured far to the north to complete some adventures in Relica. We helped to fix a lighthouse and slay a Dagonoth mother that was for some reason in the basement. Luckily her and her children didn't stand a chance against our magic. From the lighthouse, we ventured into the Fremenic territory and proved to them that we are not an outsider. We became a Fremenic warrior by completing the Fremenic trials. After becoming a warrior of the Fremenic people, we decided to be a diplomat as well and connect to two warring countries. In the Fremenic Isles, we slayed an ice troll and made peace in Relica. From there, we headed even further north to Trollheim and helped complete Edgar's ruse to unlock the Trollheim teleport. And this is where our journey resumes. Fellas, and the 1% of ladies that watch my videos, we've been going slow, and for a very good reason. Loads of players have sent me messages about how great the series has been for their accounts. They're able to follow along and see progress, and I love to see it. New players coming and giving old school RuneScape a shot is why I started making videos in the first place. But that being said, I have been taking my sweet time on this account. I wanted everyone to have a clear roadmap out of the early game and into the mid game. But from here on out, we will be grinding. The mid game is absolutely no joke. It takes hundreds of hours of gameplay to finally get to the end game, and that's plain efficient. So we're gonna have to speed it the fuck up. We'll be gaming pretty hard from here on out, and we're not gonna be showing raw gameplay in every single episode, kind of how I was. So if you guys did prefer the longer style videos, I will be streaming all of the content over on my Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash Darnick. But without further ado, Let's go get some gains. If you guys have been following along with me and clearing out that optimal quest guide, you might have noticed the ordering has changed, and that's because of one new quest, Sleeping Giants. This quest unlocks the ability to use the Giants Foundry minigame, which is a beautiful piece of content. It also allows you to essentially become a medieval blacksmith, breaking down equipment and weapons into the raw materials, then smelting it back up at a higher quality. It's a great mini game and break from traditional smithing training. So let's dive into Sleeping Giants. To start out, we'd minigame teleport to the area and see a massive giant. Of course, us being the Fremenic warrior that we are, decided to attack the giant. But lo and behold, he could speak, and his name was Kovac. He informed us that he needed our help to forge weapons in the giant's foundry, so he gave us an overview of what to do. We ran around with a huge sword between our legs, which, you know, is nothing new to us. And with that sword, we dipped it into lava, a waterfall, and then honed it into perfection. Once the sword was completed, we turned it into Kovac for our reward. Next on our list was to step away from quest and do a little bit of training. It was time to grind out some fire making. I know, a normally useless skill, but we unlock some massive things with these new levels. All right, boys, so the next part of the optimal quest guide says we need to get 30 fire making, so then we can do some other things to get an even higher fire making level. So y'all didn't know how to train fire making without doing winter taught, it's, it's super straightforward. You use a tinderbox on some logs and you uh, make a nice, beautiful fire. Boom, there we go, there's 26. We need to get to 30, it shouldn't take too long at all, maybe five minutes. We got some oak logs, we're gonna burn them till 30 and then we're gonna go do this little mini quest. It's essentially, we did do the enlightenment journey but we didn't unlock the actual paths with the balloon so we got to unlock two separate paths that will get us 34 fire making and then level 40 fire making and we need to get all the way up to level 49 to do something juicy 
and boom there we go 30 fire making that's all we needed we can now do willow logs super duper awesome but more so than that now we can go unlock the balloon transport system so it says we are gonna need 10 oak logs and 10 willow logs so should be easy peasy well we obviously can't search like that we need to just type in oak logs we'll grab i'm pretty sure they can be noted we're gonna take 10 well, that's all we can actually take right now. So we're just gonna need to head over to Entrana, which we can just teleport to because our nifty house is in Port Sam. Teleport over here, run to the good old crazy dude, unlock the crafting guild transport. And wouldn't you all fucking know it, it needs to be unnoted. <laughs> so get your logs unnoted. Obviously, he would need them unnoted to be able to use them. Why Why would he be able to use them noted? Although, you know, RuneScape logic, it should have been fine. But anyways, let's go back to him. What a smooth landing. Boom, 2000 crafting XP gets us all the way to level 31 fire making. Pretty much one whole level. The optimal quest guide said that was going to get us 34 fire making so maybe a little off it tells me you need to train all the way to 40 now and then to do the balloon transport system to rock so not sure what's going on with its calculator <laughs> looks to be a little off but that's okay fire making so quick as it is we're gonna go get some willow logs probably just straight bang out 40 and then after we bang out 40 then we'll do the rock pretty much not even rock it's the lumber yard but there's like a balloon over in the lumber, lumber yard so we'll get that unlocked and then we need to train all the way to level 49 but because i like big nice round numbers we're just going to go straight to 50 so pretty much this is the fire making episode where we just become a pyromancer and burn shit to the ground but yeah that's what we're gonna do buy a bunch of logs burn them burn them in the basket and unlock shit which is what rootscape is all about baby all right, boys, we got all the logs we need. <laughs> all right, let me pause real quick. This seems like a lot of logs, right? It's it's roughly like 800 if my high school math has uh, done me any good, but uh, it's not actually that much. You can burn a lot of logs per hour. We're not going to be really doing it in World 330 as it's a little lag if you guys can't tell. Just to something about 330, I think it's where like all the houses render. It gets kind of nuts. We're going to hop over to a different world, but I wanted to show you guys. I actually prefer when I'm doing like some hardcore fire making grinding just to keep all the logs I needed noted in my inventory because then you can just use them on the banker. Hold down one and it unbanks it. It absolutely doesn't delay any time at all. You can just run out here, go straight, keep using it. You know how many you have exactly until your goal and uh, just keeps everything nice and tidy looking pretty crisp boom there we go there's 40 fire making out of the way we can now burn teak logs we're going to finish these up these little willows that we got and we're going to head on over to our tiki boys are these are actually <laughs> pretty expensive people use these to make you know into planks but uh we're going to burn the shit out of them because we have so much money we can't even spend it on anything so let's get our first juicy inventory of teak logs and start getting some real good xp and boys after this log is finished boom there is 50 fire making absolutely huge can now go do a juicy quest but also kind of huge just in the fact that we can now do the winter todd balls if you guys don't know about winter todd it's a fire making balls that you can pretty much afk and get some pretty juicy level ups i'm gonna be honest with you all i haven't been doing much afk content on this account if i'm logged in i'm either grinding doing a farm run or doing birdhouse run that's all i'm really doing but going forward whatever i'm doing that i can't do with my full attention i'm gonna be doing some afk stuff and i think winter todd is gonna be that nice afk thing for us to do we are eventually gonna get our stats way up there anyways and it is some pretty juicy xp so uh adventure over to winter todd but i'm gonna give you all a little bit more info about him winter todd the first todd ever released and the first skilling boss in the game it came into the world on september 8th 2016 and completely changed the landscape for both iron men and normal accounts it came in like a winter storm and flipped the community's expectations of skilling on its head this ball set a standard for skilling bosses in mini games going forward now, the boss is pretty simple. You go in, cut some logs, fletch them, toss them in a magical fire that slowly weakens the boss, and boom, 
it's over. Once the boss is dead, you get a reward crate if you got enough points. From there, you can loot the chest and get some juicy items. Pretty straightforward and easy to do. And it's relatively AFK and gives some insane fire making XP for the amount of effort you put in. So going forward on the account, we'll be chilling here in AFK and when I'm doing other things. And if you all want to break from the questing grind, I'd highly recommend checking it out. Bosses and mini games are what make old school RuneScape so enjoyable. And if you're just grinding quests and money making all day long, you'll never get those juicy experiences. That being said, we still have tons of quests left to do. So let's jump back into them. The next quest on our list is super important for one huge reason, and that's weekly XP drops. Tears of Guthix is a five minute long quest that can have the potential to completely change the way you play. Once the quest is complete, you'll be able to collect the Tears of the God Guthix. These divine tears will grant you XP and your lowest skill once per week. So if you absolutely hate a skill, you can just use the tears to level it up. And that's what we'll be doing. So let's unlock the Tears of Guthix. So Tears of Guthix is a pretty straightforward quest. You're going to pretty much tell a story to this snake in the hole. Doesn't seem very complicated. Doesn't seem very rewarding either. But in reality, it is for one huge reason. After you finish Tears of Guthix, once per week, you will be able to go back and tell another story and collect some juicy Guthix tears. And what these tears do is they actually give you XP in your lowest skill. So once per week, we're gonna go and get some juicy XP in one of our skills. Typically, it, it, it's gonna be a level up almost every single time. So it's pretty huge to do. Um, obviously, it scales with your level as well, so the you know, more levels we get, more XP we get super useful for things you really don't want to train. Um, but it's just, it, I mean, it takes five minutes. You get a lot of XP and it's totally worth it to knock out. So we're gonna knock it out early to make sure we can get that nice XP. Okay. A snake in a hole that wants to, <laughs> wants to have a story. Okay. Yeah, of course. We'll, we'll tell you a story. Sure thing. Start the tears of Guthix quest. Of course, we tell her some stories about us being an adventurer. So now we need to go use our pretty little lantern, the sapphire lantern on one of these floating orbs. Ooh, I wonder how that feels. Now we're going to make ourselves a nifty little bowl to be able to catch the tears in. Boom, a Tears of Guthix is completed. One quest point, 1000 crafting XP and access to the Tears of Guthix. So since we now have it unlocked, we're actually just going to go ahead and hop in and do our first Tears of Guthix. So essentially you just want to collect the blue and not collect the green. If you collect the green, you lose points, collect the blue, you obviously get points. I haven't done this in forever. So I'm going to be honest, I'm probably not going to get that many, um, but we're going to, we're going to try to get as many as we can and uh, see how much XP we get. Okay. 97 for our first time. Not too bad. I don't think Let's see if it shows the XP drop. Looks like we got 3000 fletching. Really fletching was my lowest. Gets us to 26 fletching. I'm not sure what I was before. I think 25. It's a nice juicy little fletching level. And now we can do it the same time next week. So that's always nice to be back to adventure too. Um, hopefully next time it doesn't go on fletching. Typically, boys, to be most efficient with your tiers of gothics, the tick lords have kind of calculated that you want to do it on a really slow skill. For example, Slayer or Runecrafting. Although Runecrafting is not bad anymore, but just a skill that's super slow or a skill you hate. So really Slayer or Agility would be my preferred. Now, obviously, until I start actually leveling and I'm not just doing quests, um, that's probably not going to happen. But in the future, hopefully that's what we're going to aim for is to get it on Slayer or Agility. Anyways, boys, we're going to go back to questing. We have a ton more quests to do. Boys, let's sit down and talk about this next quest for a second because it's a fucking doozy. It's the Underground Pass. Now, I did a whole live stream of the quest over on twitch.tv forward slash darn. If you want to check out the VOD, you can head over there. And we had an absolute blast exploring the Cursed Caves of Ivan. But that's only because I've done this fucking quest like 10 times at this point. If it's your first time running through this maze designed by Satan, well, it can be a little rough. You have to take a full inventory of items. You take damage from traps every couple squares. You have insane people whispering in your ear. And if you forget one item or we'll run out of a little bit of food, well, motherfucker, you're teleporting all the way out and running all the way back through. So yeah, it can be a little rough. But luckily for us, it's not as bad because our agility level is halfway decent. Now, if you all did decided to opt out of my recommendation to get the graceful set. I'm going to re-recommend right now that you go get this. The region and lightweight effect is totally worth it. I promise you, you're going to go insane down here without it. But luckily for us, we're decked the fuck out like a sweaty chat. So we ran through all the traps and defeated 
Ibin. Upon the completion of the underground pass, we get to use that pass to the Elven Lands. And really, it's just a goddamn forsaken forest with even more traps and more danger. But we'll be adventuring there in just a little bit. For now, we're going to circle back and complete the most iconic quest in the game. Now, this quest was released in September of 2001. Jesus Christ, it was that long ago. Boys, we've been playing this goddamn game for 20 years at this point. I'm pretty sure RuneScape has lasted longer than most marriages. And well, Dragon Slayer 1 is what started all the love for me. An epic adventure for a young noob. Doing this quest back in the day turned boys into men. Turned the Steve Rune chain body wearing virgin into the dragon slain Rune plate body Chad. It was my goal for years as a new player. And today we'll adventure through it and slay Elvarg and claim our spot in the Champions Guild. Yeah, we fixed the boat. Let's go kill Miss Elvgarv. I don't think we need anything more than what we got on us, right? This should be more than enough to kill this this dragon, right? Actually, I think she smacks for whatever reason. I'm gonna I'm gonna take I'm gonna take my my little bit of rune I got. Ooh, we got a combat brace too. We're about to be geared the fuck out for Elfgar. Look at this. boys. Hold on, real quick. Hold on, hold on. This was my fit back in the day. Back in the good old day. Obviously not the glory either, but I'm not taking that motherfucker off either. But this was my fit for like a long time, a long time. Y'all remember how expensive rune plate bodies were back in the day? Nobody could afford that shit. You get a rune chain body. That was the absolute fit of the chads back in like 2000, uh, 2006, 2007 free to play days. Bull said was like, yeah, there was something stupid. And like to, to my, what was an 06? I was 11 years old. Yeah, bro. My 11 year old brain was not going to know how to make 200 K. Are you crazy? I barely know how to play the game. You're probably actually, I remember being 210 K for a full set of rune. But I don't remember if that came with the rune schema tarks. I think that's what people considered a full set back in the day. But there was no rune boots. So it was just the full rune um, with the rune schema I didn't even know how to do cow hides. I don't remember how I actually made money back in the day. Oh, I do. I mined coal. Some dude paid me to mine coal. He gave me a rune pickaxe and told me to mine coal and he would pay me when he logged on. It was like a real job type shit. I did that for a while. I don't remember what else. Oh, I killed lesser demons for the rune uh, med helms. That was a lot of fun. Hill Giants. Yeah, I fucking did Hill Giants too. Yeah, I remember those bad boys. The Limpwort Roots. Those were actually crazy expensive, like 2k each. Yeah, back in the good old days, man. RuneScape was, it was a different era. All right, let's put our, let's put our gear on. We're ready to rock and roll, boys. Take this bitch all the way out. Ooh. Elvgar. It's time to die, baby. Graceful cape on. No problem. God, she does so much damage. If we pray, does it completely nullify it? Maybe. Man, I've had a lot of people comment like, why aren't you doing this in the Iron Man? Two reasons. One, Iron Man is, is a little overdone at this point. I get it's a great game mode. I love me to see me some Iron Man progress, but it's a little overdone for videos. Two, I don't have the fucking time in the day to grind for the resources. I love the whole idea of killing your own monsters, getting your own rare drops and using them, you know, like Dragon Warhammer, AGS, whatever. Getting your own drops, I feel like that's fucking dope. But grinding the, the resources to level up your account, not so dope. <laughs> I don't have the time of the day to do that, to be completely honest with you all. Crane is also not even doing anything, so we're just going to man up and take her down. Put our Make our biceps a little bit bigger, though. See if it does anything. Boom. There we go. Elvgar is down. Let's cut this bitch's head off. Let's get a good visual of that. We only get it once. Beautiful. Look at that, boys. You all were here. The defeat of Elvgar. Beautiful. Now, let's go back to Ozak. All right. Have you slayed the dragon? I have. Actually did it? Yeah, I fucking did it. Boom. Dragon Slayer is completed. Two quest points, 18,000 strength, 18,000 defense. And even more so than that, boys, the ability to equip the rune and dragon plate bodies. Boom. Can I now buy a rune plate body? Of course. I, ooh, I probably shouldn't have done that. Oh, God, that hurts. We're never going to sell this one. So boom, 45 defense. 48 strength, and we now look like a fucking old school gamer, boys. Hold on, everybody, real quick. We're going to get a real looking fucking beautiful, boys. Look at that. The absolute swag. Love it. After our victory against Elvarg, we're on a high. and We're ready to take on one of RuneScape's most iconic quests, Regicide. Now, this is iconic for a different reason than Dragon Slayer. It's famous for its god-awful journey through the Elven Forest and through the Underground Pass. We'll need to run through multiple times in this quest. You're going to fail obstacles and take tons of damage in the quest. So, just mentally prepare yourself before we begin. Alright boys, welcome back. We are here for a <laughs> extra long quest. This one is going to be brutal. We just got done with the Underground Pass and 
what's next? What's next on the agenda? Well, it's regicide. If you're looking up in the top left-hand corner of your screen, we're going to go conquer the Elven lands. As always, the Quest Helper plugin is going to make this so much easier than it ever really is. If you guys are not using the Quest Helper plugin at, at this stage of your account, what are you fucking doing? It literally makes it easy scape. I'm, I'm going to tell you all, y'all speak about RS3 being easy scape, all that bullshit. No, Quest Helper plugin makes this so fucking easy. Also, we don't need 60 combat boys. We're going to go in at level 57. There's, I don't think there's anything super hard to kill. We got a nice juicy guard that we got to take out, but it's going to be no problem at all. So First, we need to go back through this fucking awful underground pass. Luckily for us, we marked our path. If you guys are watching our live stream that we did or any of our previous clips from that live stream, you'll know we had a nice fun adventure going through the underground pass. If you guys didn't get to check out the live stream, we are live every Wednesday and Sunday from four o'clock to whenever the fuck I have to get off for the day. Whenever my girlfriend grabs me by the nuts, it pulls me, pulls me off my computer. We have some, we have a really good time normally, but anyways, without further ado, let's get through the underground pass and arrive in the Elven lands. All right, boys. I mean, just, just look at this. I mean, it's, it's fucking drawn out where we need to go. It, it looks kind of nuts, but like, it's so nice at the same time, but what are, what are your guys' opinion on this Quest Helper plugin? I know, I know, I've been absolutely abusing it, but you know, I, I I feel like it's at some point it is a little busted, especially with Jagex's new stance on. Are you fucking kidding me? Especially with Jagex's new stance on the third party clients, you know, they're starting to ban everything. It's not Runelight, HDRS, or RS Buddy. Some plugins are absolutely busted, though, to be honest. Now, obviously, this is just, you know, quality of life because you before you'd have to look up a guide on the wiki, Rune HQ, whatever you're looking up. Before that's what you'd have to do. And now everything's just highlighted. You click through it. I have played WoW in the past. I know WoW, you could add ons that did pretty much the same thing this is doing, but I know the Rootscape community is a little, a little bit different than the wild WoW community. So I'd love to hear your guys' thought on me abusing the absolute fuck out of the Quest Helper plugin. Do you guys think it's okay? You think it should be in the game? Should Jagex take a stance against these, these absolutely busted plugins that kind of change gameplay? What do you guys think about it? Okay, so how many times is it going to take me? Hopefully less than five, maybe. We only got a couple more jumps to really get through. We have these two last jumps. Also, where did all the mages go? There was a whole bunch of Zamorak mages chilling around. Can you not kill them for their drops anymore? I remember back in the day, that was like a moneymaker. You, you killed these fucking mages that were chilling around here. Their robes were like 10k a set, and uh, you made some pretty juicy money for running all the way through the goddamn underground pass. But anyways, boys, we made it to the end. There are... Some wizards here in, in Ko Kofik, the, the crazy bastard. Let's hop through here and get to the elven lands. All right, boys, we've made it and instantly been spotted by an elf with no eyeballs. Okay, Idris, what's up, girly? I, well, I guess it could be a man too, you know, consider, holy lag. Okay, let's, uh, can we, can we go back in? What, what's going on, Jagex? What's, what's happening? So like most good things in life, you turn it off, turn it back on, and we are fixed. So let's talk to Idris now and see what's up. I guess we technically already talked to her, so we're good. We're just going to continue the path. Oh, oh shit. There, there they are. Okay, cool. Hello. Oh, shit. Um, yeah. Uh, you going to attack me? Or, or what's, what's going on here? I should speak with the, with the Lord of the area. Okay. That's, that's a fair, <laughs> that's fair. I'll go, you're buff as fuck, brother. I, I like that armor. Actually, I don't, you can't ever get armor like that, right? That that's not normal crystal armor. Anyways, this quest is awful for one huge reason. And it's these motherfucking traps. Obviously we know it's a trap, but you know, our character on the other hand, oh, he actually made it character on a lot of these don't, doesn't know what their traps. And also also, fellas, you can get poisoned on them. There's these old trip wires. It's super fucking annoying. These bad boys, too. It doesn't really seem to matter your agility level. Like, maybe it does, but oh my god. They, they do absolutely buttload of damage to you as well. Yeah, we're just going to sit here and uh, kick ourselves in the face the whole time. And uh, when we get through it, I'll let y'all know. Love the dude's hairstyle. Love the armor. Fucking beefed up. Anyways, we need to go back to the elven tracker. Y'all see what I mean, right? We're going to be running through this motherfucking forest, this cursed forest for a long, long time. There we go. Here's the elf tracker. Talk to him. See what's up. Hello. I am one of Tyron's men. <sighs> Oh, okay. All right, man. It's fine. No, it's fine. We'll just run back and forth. Aren't y'all like Elvin? Like you have Elvin magic where you can communicate telepathically or some shit. What's up? What's up with me having to run through the forest to be your all's fucking messenger? Kind of ridiculous, especially with these goddamn traps. And we're like, who set these traps? Was it the... <sighs> 
boys, that one was close. Hey, luckily we we just go ahead and climb up the other side. That's one way to get across a death pit. Yeah, just fall on your face in the spikes and get up and walk it off. No problem, brother. No problem. We gotta go back again. Are you fucking kidding me? Just with this 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 shit crystal amulet that I mean it actually looks kind of cool. Yeah, it's glowing at least. Ooh, we got a genie. Let's pop this on. Anything we can actually just straight level up. Hmm. Nothing really. We're going to use it on Slayer because low level Slayer absolutely blows. But anyways, boys, I was going to say bringing summer pies is a absolute Chad move. It gives you run energy, agility boost, and it restores your hit points. Everything you need in this fucking cursed forest. Hello. Yep. Here's the pendant dickhead. All right. So we're going to go kill the humans. Sure. Sure. We'll, we'll, we'll go kill the humans. First, we're going to check the tracks, the boot tracks. Where did they come from? And yeah, they go somewhere. I can't go, buddy. I love all the butterflies. So it's kind of a beautiful area. And okay, so we need to go in here and defeat the guard. Easy peasy. Climb through the dense forest near the tracker. You know, I didn't find a guard anywhere. Oh, there's the guard. Oh, shit. He came out swinging. Um, well, fellas, I, I'll uh, I'll be back when he's dead. Hopefully my rune scimitar can do some work on him. Uh, because if not, we have to run all the way back through the fucking <laughs> underground pass. Oh my God, boys, that was <laughs> so close. Why are these coins so pretty? Do you all see that? Anyways, that took so fucking long. That was so close. Uh, I'm going to be completely honest, probably should have brought magic runes for that. So if you guys are, you know, looking to do this in the future, bring some magic runes because we're almost for sure going to have to go get some more food. Our food is is just absolutely lacking. Although I have a theory and I, I could be totally wrong. And if it's wrong, it's going to be cut out of the video. And if it's right, you guys are going to hear this now. We should theoretically be able to use the charter ship once we unlock it over here. You can actually sail all the way from um, Catherby straight over here. So I think what we're going to do is probably going to be a good strategy is uh, obviously take the barrels, blah, blah, blah. We need two of these barrels. Um, but it's to go over here and see if we can unlock this and then sail straight back. That way we can get some food that we're for sure going to need. All right, so this is this is definitely going to be risky, but I'm doing it for you all. This is this is actually for science. If I have to run back through, I have to run back through. We're gonna we're gonna TP out. We're gonna get some coins and head to Catherby and see if we can sail here. If not, we're gonna be running all the way back through. All right, we're geared up, ready to rock and roll. We got ten thousand coins, a bunch of shark, a bunch more stamina. We we should be good as long as we can actually charter over there. I think we'll be. <sighs> I know, I know boys. I thought, I thought maybe, I thought maybe there was a chance that, you know, we, we entered the area, we unlocked it, but fucking no, we need to complete the quest. So this is a warning to all of you all. That's, uh, you need to go, you need to, God damn it. We got to go all the way back through. It's okay. It's okay. We'll, we'll be fine. We'll be all right. It's no, no big problem. I fucking hate my life. All right, boys. I'm, uh, I'm probably just a big fucking idiot, but we finally, Finally have this completed. Boom. There we go. Our bomb is distilled. We're ready to rock and roll. Beautiful. Use this on this. And it says we need to make one more. I don't have enough coal because I'm a I'm, I'm an idiot. We're going to go bank get what we need. We'll make one more bomb. We need it for our next quest anyways. So uh, let's go do that and then uh, meet you back in the cursed forest. All right, boys. Much, much, much easier this time around. Boom. That is our second one completed. And we, we should be good now. Um, do we just add that on there? Sweet. Now we just need to go get our strip of cloth. We'll pop that in there, but we do have this ready to rock and roll for when we go do morning's end part one. We have to make another bomb We're we're somewhat of a terrorist at this point, <laughs> but anyways, boys, let's run back through the underground pass and uh, blow some shit up. Well, boys, I, I want to show you the reality real quick. If you guys are doing this quest, you do an underground pass. I know we got a little lucky in pretty much every single passing of this, uh, but we failed it five times now. Five times right at the motherfucking end. So I just want to give you guys a heads up that if you're doing this on your own, you're looking, you know, you're going through it with me. Uh, you, you possibly could fail. You could possibly run through three stamina potions. It, it's a very real reality. That's why this place is uh, so depressing and soul sucking. So I just want to give you guys a heads up. Uh, you definitely don't get depressed. You could get super lucky like I did the whole time until the very end, the last journey across, uh, you start absolutely getting wrecked. It's, it's a very real possibility, but we're going to keep our head high and uh, give it one more good shot before we tell you out and grab uh, three more stamina. 
All right, boys, this is the next day. Uh, we we failed it so many more times. I decided just fuck it. I'm going to log out. And uh, yeah, here we are. We actually went, bought a cooked rabbit. So we're good to go on that. We got a bunch of stamps. We're ready to rock and roll through this motherfucking forest. Brand new day. Brand new time to quest. The, the quest is actually almost over. We're going to blow up the uh, little city over here with our little homemade terrorist bomb. And then um, that should be the end. We'll get our reward. And then we're going to go on to some more juicy quests in the L and lands. All right, so my understanding is we got to bribe this bad boy so he allows us to use his catapult. I don't know what he's thinking, like, oh, just some random dude's going to walk up and use a catapult that's aimed at our city. Yeah, brother, of course, that's perfectly fine. Go ahead, do that. Uh, so th thanks, thanks for being a dumbass, but we're going to blow up your little camp now. Chuck that on. Uh, OK, we're going to run <laughs> literally all the way around. That's that's cool. I don't know how to operate this, obviously. Chuck it into the little catapult and um, should be it, boys. Voila. We are now a real terrorist. We had a witness and kaboom. That's pretty fucking awesome. I uh, think it, it, why did it only, okay. Yeah, that's cool. So now we need to go back, report to Lord Owlworth and we should be golden. The quest will be over after that. All right, it is finished. Give me a scroll and we <laughs> We gotta go out again. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, this guy's in the claim. What's up? Shout out to Air Rider One. Also, probably doing this goddamn quest or doing fishing, brother. What are you? What are you up to? If you see this, there you go, brother. Okay, she she greeted me. Okay, uh, yeah, that's me. Thanks, Saren. Oh, they're actually on the other side. Your man did well. We are one step closer to welcoming the Dark Lord into this realm. Yeah, how about fucking no? We don't want a Dark Lord. Let's not do that. So we're going to have to stop him. We're going to go up there, tell him that everything's nice and pretty and go from there. Don't think anything spooky is going to happen further. Boom. Regicide has completed three quest points. Access to Tyron one. What? <laughs> Who fucking comes up with these names? 3,000 agility XP. And obviously we need some coins to pay off for the 100K in stamina as we abused. So that is that completed. Are we going to get any levels up from that? We are not, but we're getting pretty close to 60 agility, which you know, we're, we'll get that eventually. But yeah, boys, let's go on to the next quest on our list, which according to the optimal quest guide is going to be Tai by Wana Trio. All right, we're here talking to... <laughs> Tim, fuck you. Here we go. The chief of the Thai Biowana village. Who dares to set foot in my hut? I do, brother. I just, oh, there's just a lot. I am a roving adventurer. That just sounds so much more epic, so much more me. <laughs> I cannot get over the lack of eyeballs here. Whoever, uh, what is it? 177. Can you add some eyeballs, brother? We would look so much better with just, just something besides these soulless black dots. Anyways, I'm a roving adventurer. Probably I'm just going to help you out, brother. And it says to open it because sometimes it does get unsynced. I don't think I've ever really shown you guys this, but it does get unsynced. And you just got to open that back up and it will read exactly where you are. So looks like we need to go catch 23 of the Karambi, Karam, Kwamwa, whatever. We go catch 23 of them. Essentially, boys, this quest is great for one huge reason. And that's because you'll be able to cook Karamwans. This motherfucker needs to leave me the hell alone. Go back in your bushes, you crazy. Crazy son of a bitch. It's just a naked man with a mask on. But anyways, we got to fish these. These allow you to catch Karambwans. If you don't know about Karambwans, you can one tick them while you're cooking. They're a combo food. Pretty useful item all the way around. Super big for Iron Man. Not so much for us. You can, you know, one tick them for some cooking XP. We're probably never going to do that anyways. Probably never really going to fish them after this quest. But it is a good option for a lot of players. So anyways, boys, we're going to fish what we need. And we got to run all the way across the map and uh, start getting some Karambwans. All right, so we're up here with the good old, I'm just not even going to pronounce these names anymore. L Lufu, Lufu here. This is the man who knows the secret to, hold on, he called me a fucking whippersnapper? Come on, brother. I've talked to him multiple times. Ask him what he does twice. You did and I came back. I just want to learn what you do, bro. I mean, like, why you got all this shit just chilling out? I'm going to be I'm gonna be real honest with y'all. This motherfucker is giving me a creepy vibe with the hunchback, the, the 
beard, the bald head, the bot look. Although I kind of like his, his little like complete forearms made out of metal. Anyways, we got 20, brother. We're ready. Beautiful. Now, like the oh, fishing level. Okay. We, we, hey, boys, we just take it. We're not going to complain. Let's drop it. We need to get a, another one of these. A shark definitely ate it. Beautiful. And now we have two. Cool. So now we are going to fill this bad boy up and go east to Musa Point to buy some Karamjan rum. All right, we got that good, good, that Karamjan rum. You ought to know earlier on, because we were clicking through a lot of quests real early in the game. We had a whole quest here to smuggle this shit out, because apparently it's top tier, top tier liquor in the RuneScape community. Uh, but anyways, we got it. We put some orange slices in it, and now we need to go talk to Tyrichi. So he's actually right there. Yeah, he's, if you all see the blinking arrow, he's right on over there. We're over here. We could, we could have brought a crossbow and shot ourselves across right here, but we obviously didn't. What we're going to do instead is there's a nifty little, you know, fairy ring that instead of having to, you know, do that long fucking journey, blow through all of my stams, I'm just going to teleport to someone's house and yoink. There we go. We're here and this name is not getting pronounced. We're going <laughs> to, we're going to talk to him, see what he can do. He's actually fucking jacked. I really actually dig the necklace, brother. You are a fucking man. So anyways, let's see what he can teach us. All right. So you're actually the son of the guy. Okay. He's just trying to catch a Karam one so he can feed his village. That totally makes sense. Um, I mean, thank you. Thank you for that. I, I do really enjoy that. Yes. Yes, sir. I <laughs> know you can't believe your eyes. You've never seen something that large, have you? All right. Now with that, uh, you know, slightly PG 13 scene out of the way, little cut scene. We're, uh, gonna, what are we, what are we doing? No. Oh, oh, oh why? <sighs> Well, we're going to go staff bash a fucking yoger, joger. They're, they're over here in this cave. Um, that was a little mishap. Not a huge deal. Let's go kill one and get its bones. All right. So we went and killed a yoger, got their bones, lit it on fire. That's kind of fucking dope, to be honest. I, I really like that. That's like a cool. I now I wish, listen, boys, I had a theory for a long time. I, I highly doubt Jagex ever doing it. But if any J mods are out there listening to me, this is a amazing idea and a chance to make a useless skill something useful. Fire making, <laughs> what's it for? Being able to kill one or Todd, that's about it, right? What if, what if you could burn different things that gave you effects, maybe like incense sticks, or hey, you already have the model for it, burn bones and allow you to cook food on the burnt bones that give a bonus, like they restore prayer and health. I don't know, I'm throwing out ideas here. What do you all think about that? Leave your comments down below. I think it would be absolutely fucking sick. I, I really think it would revitalize one skill that literally is pretty much useless. So uh, anyways, let's continue on with the quest. We're gonna crush this up, but we don't have the inventory spot. We have a lot of rock bonbons. We're gonna drop one. All right, do not bury. <laughs> God damn, that got me. All right, right click, use the bones on the fire. Now, listen, I think what fucked me up is Runelight actually has it. Like, it flips it for you. So, um, yeah, yeah, it flips it for you. So you just, you just, you can left click that bad boy on there. Beautiful. We got these marinated bones. Okay. And then we got to use it on a spear. I know it says iron, but listen, dude, you cannot buy a fucking iron spear on the GE. I just straight up bought a rune one because it was cheaper than throwing in a 50k offer for a iron spear. So uh, I know it's a little like 15k. It's okay. We're going to chuck it in there. Beautiful. We now have a poisoned rune spear. Is that, is that really it? Okay, cool. So I'm going to go talk to Ta Tahum. All right. We found the first son of the chief. It's God forsaken village. All right, we're going to follow him on his hunt to kill whatever the fuck this is. We got to use an agility potion on him so he can be more agile. I mean, makes sense, I suppose. Um, is the cutscene going to be over? Can we? Nope. He's far, far too, too agile. So we're going to boost him up, take our juice, and take our poison spear. It's actually Rune, brother. You're going to fuck him up now. Yeah, let's go with you on the hunt. You should be able to take him out easy peasy. Let's see him. Ooh, one's, ooh, he's just, ooh. Although that's a big motherfucker. I would be a little scared personally, but hey, man, I'm not a tribal warrior. The end approaches. I like how he tells his prey, God's bear witness. I'm watching you, brother. Beautiful. So we should have taken him out. Absolutely no promise. Absolutely no problem. He took him out. And now 
Looks like we need to kill a monkey. Uh, I don't know why we need to kill it with magic or range, but we we do apparently, which I mean, that's okay. We brought a nice little, little staff. We're gonna go kill a monkey and get its bones and uh, go from there. All right, so we found ourselves a little monkey. Bye-bye, poor little monkey. All right, so we got to give this crazy motherfucker a whole bunch of stuff. Hopefully, we just got to give him the sandwich, though. Maybe nothing more than that. Yeah, so now we got this crafty manual. It says we need to go all the way back to DKP. And boom, we're here. That took probably like 10 seconds. Yeah, of course, we took the vessel to Tensei. This mad genius gave us the crafting manual. And now we can all go back to Tim Raku's house and finish this motherfucking quest through the jungle. Actually, I mean, boys, it wasn't too bad. It took me a, a good 30 minutes. Not awful. The, the following quests, the quests in this episode in particular, are pretty rough. They're all like that mid tier, upper mid tier not master but just long motherfucking quest but boys we are getting up there we're almost at 200 quest points i honestly can't believe it i don't feel like i've done that much at all i did also want to say though boys i know you guys kind of see this and it's like holy shit he's doing a whole bunch of quests all at once and i mean like technically i am yeah i'm doing a lot of quests but I'm spreading it out. I do probably like five, five quests a day, maybe six or seven if I'm feeling frisky. And I do some farming runs, I do some birdhouse runs, and that's pretty much how I'm playing RuneScape right now. The quickest way to burn out and hate playing the game, making it feel like a job, is to bust out all of this shit as much as you can, playing 10, 15 hours a day. It's not healthy, one, and two, it's gonna make you hate the game in the long term. So I highly, 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 God damn, I cannot speak highly of it. You you need to break up these grinds. You do not need to bang them all out as fast as possible. Take your time with it. The game is meant to be a game. It's meant to be enjoyed. It's you go at your own pace. You know, boys, if you don't want to quest this much, I would I would really recommend doing two quests a day, maybe one or two bird runs a day, one or two herb runs a day, and AFK the rest of it, I don't know, Winter Todd or Motherload Mine, whatever you want to do, do it because that's what the RuneScape is so fucking great for that a lot of other MMOs lack is the ability to pretty much carve your own path, more or less. So long rant over about how great RuneScape is and how you need to uh slow down a little bit sometimes and just enjoy the scenery. Let's finish this quest. Oh my God. Um, you know what? We'll be a little humble with it. It wasn't anything really nothing for an adventurer of our caliber. There we go. Ty Biowana trio is completed two quest points and a bunch of XP and a bunch of different stuff should get us some level ups, right? All right, boys, we're back. We're here doing another quest in the desert. This one's actually pretty tough. Warning for all you newbies out there. This one is recommended the early 70 combat. We're going to try to cheese it with some water blast spells. There's it's really not a long quest, but there is a pretty, pretty bad quest. A uh, boss fight at the end. I think we can do it though. We're fucking decked out in the mystic. Spent a, a few hundred K on looking like a absolute Chad and we should be able to take him out. So without further ado, let's start the contact quest. Oh my God. This man needs some Accutane. Is he, is he still cursed? I'm, I'm not understanding it, brother. Your skin should have cleared up already. I, I thought we helped him out, right? We already helped him out before. Um, this is skin is just permanently like that. That's awful. I'm so, so sorry to hear that. Oh, y'all digging their armor. Jeez. That's, that's pretty beefy armor. Look at those shoulder pads. Oh, look at that bow. Oh my God. That is, oh, I love the look of that. I wonder if the old school team is ever going to actually open up the other side of this. I mean, it's a fucking desert right now, but I've heard, I've never actually adventured through, but I've heard in RS3 that they've actually opened all this up. It's probably pretty cool, but, um, See what's down here. Oh, we need to go down the real spooky ladder. This does require a light source. Um, we do have the lantern, so we should be okay. It's not really, buddy. We're, we're fucking good. Jesus Christ. All right, we're 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 gonna be okay. So we have this lantern. It it should stay lit. You also can use the candor and headpiece. I didn't want to because I wanted to keep the mystic on for the little bit of bonuses. I think that little bit of bonuses is going to matter uh, towards the end. But anyways, we're just going to run through here. You know, you just put on your prayer when things attack you. You all know how it goes. There's going to be some traps you got to evade. It's not like a huge deal to get through here. Towards the end of it, obviously, we're going to have to fight this. Uh, what? What in the fuck? Hold on, dude. Okay. Is this maybe we're gonna give him the benefit of the doubt we're gonna say he's on a slayer task right fellas and he's not down here bodying 
for some random fucking drop <laughs> that the locust drop. I, although he had a fire making cape, so maybe he was just an Iron Man. So any Iron Man that played <laughs> really play, let me know if this is like an actual spot you're supposed to. This is like an actual spot you're supposed to train at. Ooh, we don't want to get smacked out by these naughty boys. I really, I really like like the desert aesthetic. I hope with this new Raids 3 coming out. Oh my God, it actually went out. Oh, that was spooky. That was actually spooky. Bring the tinderbox, fellas. I thought it couldn't go out. Uh, oh, magically was uh, extinguished. That was a little spooky. Uh, if you all don't know, in old school RuneScape, if your lights go out and you're in the dark, for some unknown reason, these, these little fucking critters start hitting you. So you want to make sure almost at all times you have a light source if you're going somewhere spooky. I don't know about you all, but I was actually lured a couple times actually as a brand new member in the Lumbridge Swamp. Uh, the first time, obviously, they lured me down there. And the second time, I just brought food and thought I could out eat it. No, you can't out eat it. it. It will completely stack you the fuck out and you will for sure die. But I digress. Let's go take on this nasty motherfucker. Like I'm telling you, boys, this is a super, super quick quest. We just got. Oh, that's a dead body. Oh, no, that is a <laughs> a actual dead body. Just chilling. Okay. We find parchment covered in blood. Let's read it. You're on a mission to relieve our agent inside Minifos. We know of a tunnel beneath the Temple of the Lesser Gods. You can use the bypass the lockdown. Be vigilant of traps and the hostile natives. They're about as welcoming as the Minifites. They only slightly look better. Okay. Well, he got absolutely fucked. Now, I'm pretty sure the boss fight is... What, are we just going to yell at him over the, the cliff? I'm noob no more. What's going on? Yeah, your uh, your person died. Your husband, whatever. Whoever it is. I don't know. Maybe your lover. I'm not really 100% sure. But uh, they're dead. And uh, we're not a spy. We come from Draenor Village. And I did free the prince all on my fucking own. Oh, no. We have to go back to... Alcarid, that's that's no fun. All right, well let's let's trek back to Alcarid and uh, next time y'all see me, we'll be fighting the boss because there's not much more to do. Talk to Osman and then come back and. God, there's corpses everywhere. This is going to be bad. Alrighty, boys. We made it back through. <laughs> that was a little, a little rough. The locusts actually kind of fucked me up. So uh, just be careful when you're running through there. It hit it banged out at 20 on me. Y'all know I'm the king of getting fucking banged out one tap. So uh didn't happen this time, <laughs> but definitely could happen to you all. So just make sure you're paying attention. Now, anyways, back to the quest at hand. They are having an intense argument over there. And the giant scarab is going to come through. Oh, look at. Look at that. What the fuck? So the scarabs combine into the giant scarab, who is going to probably one tap Osman. Oh, he got eight or disappeared. I'm, I'm not sure what happened. Says we need to pray ranged and safe spot it. So it's going to be our strategy. Should work okay. I mean, it doesn't even look like he's going to move. So the magic level is relatively low. At least that's what the wiki says. So it should be a pretty easy fight. Fuck it. We're even going to boost our magic up. Um, It does say, although, to take these out as fast as possible because these will do a lot of damage on you although this man has a super high magic level so we're not going to take it out we're just going to eat through it we're going to try to kill this bad boy take his ass out these motherfuckers do a lot a lot of damage we just need to keep our hp above 20 i think that's the max out of pretty much everything here as long as you keep your hp high shouldn't be too much of an issue this is really the only person that can damage us right now so we're probably oh oh shit uh no <laughs> that man can damage us too so we're actually going to just oh that's getting a little spicy a little a little spicy okay okay yeah fellas we got all three combat styles attacking us not looking too hot for us something is draining the absolute fuck out of our prayer too not too sure what it is. We need to take this bad boy out because I will get comboed for sure. If not, he's good. And anyway, now we can go back to killing the giant scarab. And okay, don't tease me here. It's always the last little sliver of HP that they hang on to. Boom, it is all over. We can now claim our Karis. What the fuck? This dude's alive? Was he just hiding the whole time? All right, man. Oh, I just did an all right job. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Let's get our motherfucking Karis and get out of here. So boys, if you all are in the same stage of your account that I, I'm in right now, use magic because <laughs> the wiki says you ain't going to hit shit with range and you probably are not going to hit shit with melee. So it's words to the wise fellas use, uh, use magic. It's what it's here for. It's absolutely busted at low levels. Anyways, without further ado, we're going to run back through this fucking labyrinth and get our quest for reward from the high priest.
All right, so here we are. We're back. Let's get our motherfucking reward. Yeah, you better have wonderful news. <laughs> Boom. Contact is completed. 7,000. Thieving XP, a Karis, a combat lamp, and now we can bank in this godforsaken desert city. We're supposed... Ooh, 4040 thieving. That's getting up there. Definitely getting up there. We're supposed to use this combat lamp on magic, so we can definitely do that. Don't believe anything else would even be remotely useful, so we'll use it on magic should get us all the way up to well it's going to give us 7,000 xp so we we should be good for now let's go ahead and start doing our next quest i lied fellas we actually had one more one more wish left i just i don't know i, I didn't notice it i was just so upset from not getting all the xp all the dopamine all at once we actually got 49 magic which uh doesn't really unlock anything our next big spell Bells are all going to be at 50. We can use Ivan's Blast at 50, which is kind of big. Not that we're really going to be using it, but it is nice to finally have. And the next real huge one's at 55 for high alchemy. Other than that, the normal spell book kind of dies off, I'd say, probably at 55. Yeah, you know, you can use these surge spells when you get really up there. And some of the teleports are useful, but uh, not for us, not for what we're going to be doing on this account anyways. So 55 magic is pretty big. We're, we're really aiming for that one. And then from there, obviously, we have some lunar spells we're going to need to unlock. But that's so far in the future, fellas. Don't even worry. Don't even worry your little pretty faces about it at all. So next, we need to go do a... <laughs> A pretty special quest. It's it's super easy and it's gonna get us some juicy range levels. And that quest is the Temple of Ikov. All right, boys. So you may be wondering what the fuck I am doing, and I am actually trying to get our range up to level 40. I thought that you know we were good. Apparently, we didn't use a lamp where we were supposed to use it. I think the last quest we may have needed to use it on range. Not completely sure, but it's not that big of a deal. We're gonna spend probably about 20 to 30 minutes getting our range up to level 40 to be able to do the Temple of Ikov. So um, we got some black knives, they're pretty cheap, like 50 GP each, it's like you know, 200 k full set of snake skin to give the maximum rage bonus for our level. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna AFK. You could uh uh, go to the Ammonite crabs because they are unlocked and they, you know, they're on Fossil Island, all that good shit. But you got to fight people for them. I don't feel like dealing with that. I just want to sit back, relax, and uh, we'll just kill some some good old rock crabs. It looks like, let me see my XP tracker. It looks like we're getting damn near like 10K XP an hour right now, which doesn't seem like a lot. But I mean, we got like two, three K per level. So maybe an hour max we got to spend here and then we can get back on to the questing grind. All right, boys, we now have the 40 range. We're going to kill off this last rock crab to establish our dominance <laughs> in Relica. They know who, who the boss is now, boys. Of course, he's going to drop a casket. What are we going to get? Anything juicy? Ooh, 160 coins. I'll take the money to the bank. Now, boys, we got 40 range, so that means we can now do Temple of the Eikhoff. So we're going to boot up stream and start questing until our dick falls off. The next quest up on the list is a fucking doozy. I did this quest live on stream without mentally preparing myself for it. And let me give you all a warning. Going to this quest either drunk or cracked out on Adderall because the puzzle is absolutely awful. Now, Runelight does save our ass on 99% of quests in this game, but Jagex knows this quest rewards a fat stack of runecrafting XP, so they want us to hate ourselves even more. The puzzle is randomized and different for everyone. Highly recommend just going to the wiki and doing some basic math with the puzzle pieces. Essentially, each color and shape is worth points and you need to match the points in the machine to unlock it. But we did eventually complete it without a hitch and received our juicy runecrafting XP. And boom, 51 fire making. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not going to record every single level, but I did want to record this one just because it's something huge for the account. 1,000 total level, fellas. Let's look at our playtime just real quick because it is not that high. Seven days is, uh, you know, in RuneScape terms, that's really nothing. What is that? Roughly like 150 hours for you know, a lot of quests completed, a thousand total, and we have not been sweating at all. I mean, I'll be honest, probably half the time is just doing farm runs and just AFKing just a little bit, but um, looking pretty, looking like a fucking gangster here at Winter Todd. Uh, pro tip for any of you guys doing Winter Todd, or thinking about doing it in the future, turn on Entity Hider, uh, <laughs> then you don't have any of this lag. If I turn off Entity Hider, let's see if it turns off real quick. Look at all these motherfucking people. And this is early in the morning, fellas. This is 8 a.m. on a Tuesday. Now, imagine 7 p.m. 
you know, on a busy day, it, it gets fucking nuts. Anyways, turn this off so there's no lag and uh, just make sure we have a good game. I'll keep AFK in here for a while, uh, editing a video, obviously, so that's what we're doing. Uh, but as soon as that's done, we're going to go right back to questing. No fucking way. I mean, this is my second crate. We got a nice little pair of warm gloves. Not that they do anything, so I'm pretty sure you get the max bonus just from four. Uh, but... There we go, looking pretty cool. <laughs> the the loot that we're gonna get is not any anything good, obviously. Uh, but we're just gonna go ahead and open it because I mean our stats are low. I'm not gonna fill up my whole fucking bank with you know the reward crates. So we're just gonna open it anyways, fellas. We're probably not gonna like stay here a crazy amount of time, just kind of when we're AFKing and we have other things to do. But yeah, I thought it was pretty <laughs> pretty funny. I mean, maybe we could lucky get the Phoenix Eye pre-10. That would be kind of fucking nuts. But uh, anyways, boys.